Today, we're going to be looking at attacking multi-factor authentication, MFA, in web apps. I'm going to cover a little bit of theory, and then, as usual, we'll dive into some labs. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's dive in. So what is multi-factor authentication anyway? Well, in a nutshell, we have to use more than one factor of authentication to prove our identity. It's also commonly known as two-factor authentication, or 2FA. The difference being that 2FA only implies two factors and is essentially a type of MFA, multi-factor authentication. They're used interchangeably a lot, so if you prefer one over the other, then no worries, but I prefer to say MFA. So what are these factors? Well, many people know the old phrase, something you know, something you have, something you are. Now, I think this is an oversimplification of authentication factors, and people can often get confused, but it does give us a useful starting point for thinking about what we need our authentication to look like. So what does a typical flow for a web app look like anyway? Well, this can vary wildly, but using time-based one-time passwords, TOTP, is a pretty popular method and involves the creation of a one-time password for use when you're authenticating. For this, we have two main journeys. First, we have the enrollment. So a user provides their credentials, their username and password. And if they're valid, a shared key is created. This is stored in an app like Authenticator, and then the MFA on the account is enabled. Fairly straightforward if we don't dive into the crypto, etc. Next, we have the login. So a user provides their credentials, again, username and password. If they're valid, the user is forwarded to a TOTP login form. The user enters the code provided by their app, which is then verified by the server. And if all is well, the user is authenticated. There are, of course, other ways to achieve this, but let's move on to how we can actually attack MFA. All right, for our first trick, I'm going to make MFA disappear. So we just come to my account and we have some credentials. So I think it's Vina and then Peter. And then we get this usual, please enter your four digit security code. So let's come to the email clients and we'll just open this up and we get our security 1972. So I'll just grab this, come back, pop this in and hit login. And it looks like we come and end up at our my accounts page, which is, you know, expected behavior. So two things that I notice about this login process. One, that's a very short MFA code. So, you know, only four digits, probably quite easily brute forcible. And second, we're just gonna try and bypass it completely. So let's log out. The user account that we have is Carlos. So we just come back and then we'll log in as Carlos. So in this case, we've stolen their credentials. And then again, we get this four digit security code, but really, all we're going to do is just come to my account, hit enter, and we're logged in as Carlos. So making sure that your multi-factor authentication is applied to every resource or every place that it needs to be applied to is really, really important. And you'd be surprised how often these kinds of bypasses actually work to an endpoint or a resource or, or a page that should be protected. So that is our first lab out of the way. All right, so here we are at the lab and this time I've switched my proxy on. So we have traffic routing through Burp Suite. And again, we're just gonna log in as Ina, Peter, and have a look at the flow just to get a feel for the application. So I'm gonna come into the email client, grab the code 0789 and then log in. And we successfully log in. So. Let's take a quick look to, at the traffic and see what we can find. And we can see the post login here. We can see our credentials going in, so Vina and Peter. And then we can also see a get login to. So something interesting here is we have the verify with the username. And then we have the post to login to as well. And the first thing that I would test in this case is Will this valid MFA code work with other users, for example? So can we just change the verify to Carlos and our valid code? Will this work for another user? So let's give this a quick try. Let's log ourselves out, come to my accounts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on intercept, Nina, Ita, and then we're going to forward this because we want to verify these credentials against this user first. Otherwise, it's probably just going to say, hey, invalid username, password. 
And then we get the login too. So we want to change this to Carlos. Then we can switch intercept off for the time being. Come back to our email server, refresh. And yeah, interestingly enough, we don't get a code here because we changed the username to Carlos. So what we're going to do is come back, try and generate a code. So Ina, Peter, and then we're not going to use it in this case. And then we're going to grab it. So if I just refresh, 1962, paste it in here. And then before we hit send, let's come back to intercept and then change this back again to Carlos since that's the user that we're targeting and we're going to see if Fina's code works with Carlos. Unfortunately, we get incorrect security code. So this unfortunately doesn't work. But what we can also try is brute forcing this code because it's only a four digit security number. So if there's no brute force protection, then this should be fairly trivial. So I'm going to come to Web Suites and then all we're going to do is come to HTTP history and we'll grab this post request and press control I to send to intruder and then clear all of the selections, change this to Carlos and then add the highlight here. Now we actually need a payload and I suppose the easiest payload would be to just use for I and range on Python and then one to 10,000, but that wouldn't give us things like 0010, for example. So another way we could do this is with a nested loop, or we can just use the string format function. So I'm just going to bim and then call this num.py and then insert and then for num in range 1 to 10,000, we want to print dot format and then we pass in num like this and then if we just do python3 num.py you can see that we get the output but more importantly if we scroll up you can see that we get 0001 0002 for example so we can just do the same thing and then output this to num.txt like this and then obviously if we cat num.txt we have our payload list so we'll come back to Intruder and then we can load in our word list and we'll grab our num.txt and let's just hit start attack. And here I'm going to pause this now because I can see a 302 in the list. Sorry if the text is a little bit small. I'm just going to click on this, take a look at the response. We get a 302 found instead of like a 200 OK. And the 200 OK gives us the response of in incorrect security code. So let's grab this. We'll take the session. You can see we have set cookie session. So we'll just use this. Come back to here. Come back to home. Update our session token and then browse to slash my account. And we are logged in as Carlos and we are also solved the lab as well. So that's it for this video. Now, this was a requested topic from a viewer. So of course, if there are other topics you want me to cover, leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.